Good afternoon and welcome to our program today. My name is Maricela and I'm the Early Learning Coordinator here at the San Francisco Public Library. Wherever you are tuning in from today, we're really happy to see you have today with us and we welcome you to this today's program and this month's series of programs as we celebrate first person honoring, honoring Native and Indigenous culture. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that as I stand here in San Francisco in California, we are on the unceded land of the Ramatush Ohlone people, an area that spans the San Francisco Bay Area through Monterey Bay and the Lower Salinas Valley. Here we see an image. I would also like to take a moment to thank the friends of the San Francisco Public Library who make this program and other library programs possible. Please let us know if you enjoyed today's program in the chat. Next slide. However, today's program is brought to us through partnership with the National Park Service, the Golden and the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. Today's program is part of our monthly Nature Boost series, a special collaboration between the Golden Gate National Recreation Area, the Presidio Trust, and the National Park Service and the library. These programs highlight special places or services that the parks have to offer us, the public, and you, our library patrons. Nature Boosts have explored Netlands End. They've explored the story walks in the parks. They have featured rangers telling creation stories from the original inhabitants, the Ohlone, and have also explored native plants. Our special guest today is National Park Service Ranger Fatima Colindres, Community Programs and Outreach Ranger. She not only brings people to the park, but she brings the park to the people through outreach programs such as the Roving Ranger, the Park Service mobile outreach truck, or when she brings out Che, the raccoon, out to ranger talks and storytelling events. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our Ohlone Games presenter, Fatima Colindres. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here with all of you and uh, share a little bit of the story of the Ohlone people. Um, it is my pleasure to share this story, especially in this month when we are honoring and remembering all the legacy that they have left behind. All right, so let's get started. So in this first slide that we are seeing right now, um, we are seeing uh, <clears throat> a, a, an old drawing back from the early 1800s, uh, where it's depicting uh, three people in a Thule boat. And why am I starting with this slide? Well, it's because today we are going to be learning a little bit more about how Olone people have used plants um, that grow all around them for food, for medicine, for art, for building materials, and of course, for games. Uh, at the end of this program, I'm going to teach you one of my favorite games, the game of staves. But I wanted to start off with a little bit of history of the uses of plants and the uses, uh, multiple uses that the people have have um, used them for. So one, of course, is transportation. In this image, we see these three people crossing the bay and um, they are on this Thule boat. The middle person in the picture looks uh, like they're sick or cold because they're wrapped up in a blanket. The other two people are uh, rowing the boat. And uh, what it makes me think about here is the great challenges that Olone people have faced throughout uh, the time ever since the Europeans came to this area. Um, with the coming of the Europeans, the lives of the Olone people changed dramatically. And uh, one of the biggest things that occurred was sickness, new sicknesses were brought to this land. But the people are survivors and they are still here today with us. And I have learned so many stories and uh, traditions from uh, my Olone friends. And so I wanted to, you know, be here with you all today and share some of those uh, stories with you. All right, so let's uh, continue to the next slide. 
All right, so we're talking about indigenous plants and their uses. Well, in this next slide, you see two of my favorite plants here in the Presidio of San Francisco where I work and live. The first one is yarrow and it's the white blooming yarrow. Yarrow is a plant that's super special in that you can use it as a natural band-aid. It stops the bleeding. And on uh, indigenous people of California, Aboriginal people of California have used this plant for millions, for thousands and thousands of years, maybe even millions of years, but at least thousands. And uh, the next plant on the slide is the bee plant. And since today we're gonna be doing an art project as well as playing a game, I wanted to show you one of the plants that has been used uh, to make black dye or black paint. Uh, this is the bee plant. Today, the bee plant can also provide habitat for bees. That's where it gets its name. Next slide. One of my other favorite plants, this one because of its wonderful aroma, but also because of its medicinal uses is the yerba buena plant. Yerba buena was so abundant all over the Presidio and San Francisco and the Bay that back in the time when the Europeans first came to this area back in 1776, you know, they saw so much yerba buena growing ever, everywhere or wild mint um, that they decided that they would call the town that would become San Francisco originally yerba buena. That was the original name of our city. Well, at least the when it was a town. Next slide. All right, Thule. Now Thule is very special. So in the first drawing that we saw originally, we saw three people sitting in a boat. Well, that boat wasn't made out of wood. It was made out of Thule reeds. And this is an image of Thule. Thule grows around Mountain Lake here at the Presidio of San Francisco. And uh, here you're seeing an image of Thule. And uh, Thule not only can be used for boat making, but it has many other uses. So next slide. You can make homes out of tule. Olone people use tule for their homes. The homes were biodegradable. So whenever they were ready to move to a new site, a new uh, location, uh, because Olone people have always been hunter gatherers and they uh, have moved from place to place. It was very functional to make their homes out of tule and then move to a new location and recreate their village out of tule again. Tule, as I mentioned, is a great uh, building material and uh, biodegradable as well, so very sustainable. Next, uh, next slide. All right, in this image, um, we see three Olone, I mean, two Olone men and one Hawaiian elder. Now, nowadays, people of the Olone community are teaming up with other uh, representatives of indigenous cultures throughout um, the United States, uh, including Hawaii. And they come together at special gatherings. They call uh, the big time. I'll be talking a little bit more about that. But in this image, you see these three men, they are standing in front uh, next to a Thule boat. So this is what a Thule boat actually looks like nowadays. Um, the Olone people have been relearning their traditional ways and teaching new generations. So here you see these young Olone men standing next to this boat with this Hawaiian elder and uh, sharing their knowledge to people like you and me at the great big time gathering. Next slide. Here you see uh, Costa Non Rumson Carmel Olone youth who have come to the Presidio on an annual basis to share their knowledge, knowledge that they have gained from their elders on how to use plants for a variety of things. In this uh, photo, you see these uh, four young men uh, standing in front of uh, their Thule making station. So they're making Thule boats, little miniature Thule making station boats, or you know what I'm trying to say. They're, they're showing you how to make the little miniature boat. So if you've never made one, I uh, tell you, I suggest to you to go to the next Olone gathering in your neighborhood and uh, learn from them how to make these special boats, at least as a toy for you to keep at home. I have one myself. <laughs> Next slide. So not only are these young people learning from their elders how to make um, all these uh, traditional 
crafts and tools and um, uh, objects like Thule houses and Thule boats, but they're sharing it with us. And so here is a photograph of one of the last um, big time gatherings here in the Presidio at Rob Hill, where they were demonstrating and showing the Thule boat and how to make a Thule boat. And, um, you know, they, these types of gatherings happen uh, different times of the year in different parts of the Bay Area. But here in the Presidio, traditionally it happened in October. Um, and that was because October is the harvest season or the time of the brand new year, the time of the harvest of the acorns. And that marks uh, the time of the new year for the Olone. So if you are in luck and you find out about the next uh, tribal gathering, I invite you to, you know, find out and go check it out yourself so you can learn a little bit more about their traditions. This is how I have learned some of the stories and some of the games that I'm going to uh, talk about today. Next slide. All right, so this is a clapper a stick. A clapper stick is a ceremonial instrument and it's used at different gatherings. Instead of a drum, the Olone people use clapper sticks. And the way that they use it is I have my clapper stick right here. And so they, they clap against the palm of the hand, just in that way. Now, when the clapper stick breaks, they don't throw away the clapper stick. What they do is they use the old pieces uh, and make game pieces out of them, the game of staves. Next slide, please. So this is what the game pieces look like. Now, these game pieces were made by a friend of mine. He's Olone, and uh, his name is Zachary, and he made them for the Presidio Visitor Center so that we could use them here in the park to teach visitors how to play this game. I have used them myself to teach um, uh, library participants at different libraries how to play this game using these sticks in the past. So today, I'm going to teach you how to make your own game pieces in a little bit. All right, continue. Next slide. All right, so this is the plant that's used to make those sticks. Uh, this is the elderberry plant. And the elderberry uh, plant or bush or tree grows here in the Presidio. This is what it looks like. Medicinally, just like all the other plants I showed you today, it can be used for cold and flu as a tea to help you fight those sicknesses. Um, but just like the Ceanothus, which I always like to talk about, the purple blooming plant that uh, you can make soap out of, this one is also a soapy plant when it's in bloom. You can also use the the blooms to make shampoo. So if you're ever out in the wilderness, not here in the national park, because you can't cut any of these plants. Um, but if you're out in the wilderness and you find elderberry and you're at a shampoo, this is your natural shampoo right here. It's also high in vitamin C. So Olone people throughout California have used it um, to eat as a food. Uh, products. So they dried the berries and eat the berries. Um, they've used the leaves, the bark for uh, many medicinal uses, including uh, to make tea to help with fevers, to fight fevers. Those are just some of the uses of the elderberry plant. Next slide. All right, so these are the supplies you're gonna use today uh, to create your own game of staves, okay? So if you remember the previous photo that I showed you of the stave pieces that were made by Zachary, he used different um, symbols uh, to decorate his game pieces. He used diamond shapes, he used waves, he used triangles and squares. So you can be just as creative as Zachary and decorate your game of staves in whatever is meaningful to you. So for example, for me, I love plants. And so I used little leaves to decorate my stave pieces. And I also used um, little flowers or little hearts to uh, decorate my game 
pieces. So you can be as creative. When I asked Zachary why he chose the symbols or designs that he chose for the game pieces that he made for the visitor center, he said that they were inspired by different um, baskets that he's seen that were made by Olone women from the past. And he also was inspired by uh, traditional Olone drawings, like the ones that you see at Mission Dolores. And, uh, and then they just came to him. He said, uh, while I was making my, my game pieces, the designs just kind of came to me. So let the designs come to you and be creative and have fun and use your favorite colors um, because you know these game pieces are yours and they represent you. Now on one side of your game pieces, you're going to put your favorite design just like I did, right? On the other side, you're gonna put your initials, okay? So like I put FC for my initials because we wanna make sure that one side has a beautiful decoration and the other side has just your name so you don't lose your, your game pieces. Next slide, please. All right, so for those of you that uh, need to see the, the directions again, don't worry. These directions are gonna be put into the chat so that you can download this link and print them out at your leisure so that you can have the directions and how to play this game. But in the next uh, moment, uh, my son and I are gonna play this game with you uh, or for you so that you can see how it's played. But basically the object of the game is to uh, win five points. When I play it, I always say five points, but some Olone friends of mine, they've played it to 10 points or 20 points. If you have a, a long time or a lot of uh, time or hours to to spend playing this game, then you can make the points higher. But um, for me, I usually do five points because it's really hard to get to five points. And so how do you get your points? Well, since you have decorated your stave pieces and one side has decorations and the other side is blank, it only has your name, then um, if you get three of the same kind, so whether they're all blank or they're all with drawing, that means one point, okay? So three and three. Three with drawing and three without, that's one point. But if all six pieces land facing with the drawings or all six pieces land blank, that equals two points. And I know that can sound a little confusing, so I'm gonna demonstrate it so you know what I'm talking about. But the directions and the instructions are right here, uh, so you can download this information later. Next slide, please. All right, now you're gonna to have to have someone to play with. And so on today's uh, demonstration, we're gonna have two teams. We're gonna have the Coyote team. The Coyote, because Coyote, the creator, according to Olone, a creation story, Coyote created everything that's beautiful and good, including the Olone people. So Coyote is known as the creator. So Alejandro, my son, is going to represent Coyote today, and he will be the chief of the Coyote tribe. I will be, next slide, please. I will be representing the Hummingbird tribe. Hummingbird, according to another creation story and a friend of mine who is Olone, um, she told me that Hummingbird is the mother of all the Olone people, and therefore she is considered good luck. So whenever you go out, she told me, and you see a hummingbird, especially if it's early in the morning, you will have good luck for the rest of the day. And since we're gonna be playing this game and for this game, you need a lot of luck, I'm gonna be the hummingbird, the mother, and uh, we are going to play this game. Next slide, please. Oh, I think that is the last slide. So let's play the game, all right. Here we go, I'm gonna move my camera so you can see our playing field. Alejandro, are you ready to play this game? Yeah. All right, come on, we gotta do this. <laughs> okay, here we go. I have my game pieces ready. Alejandro, we're gonna use my game pieces because I don't think you've made yours yet. No, I haven't. All right, 
So here is how we're going to play the game. Alejandro is the coyote tribe. I am the hummingbird tribe. And why do we have these two tribes? Well, because the story says that a long time ago, the coyote tribe came over to my territory because I live right by the river. As you saw in that last picture, the hummingbird was swimming, was uh, flying right over the water. Well, the coyote tribe came over to fish in my river, in my territory, without asking for permission. Mm -hmm. He and his people have been fishing all day, and now they have gathered so much fish, they have caught so much fish, they're getting ready to go home. But guess what? That fish belongs to me. So I say, uh, 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 you can't take all the fish. And so coyote people, they, of course, want to take all the fish. And they're like, we fished it. We worked so hard all day. We have to take the fish. And I said, no, no, no. You didn't ask for permission. You didn't. So the fish belongs to us. But instead of getting angry at each other and fighting it out, instead, we can play a game and decide who gets all the fish. So Alejandro, Coyote Chief, are you ready to play this game with me? And are you okay that whoever wins keeps all the fish? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, the coyote representative has said he agrees with whoever wins this game keeps all the fish. So here we go. Let's just play to three points, okay? Whoever gets the first three points wins. Here we go. All right, because I live by the river, my people and I are the caretakers of this stream where the fish was caught, I will go first. So you throw your game pieces just like so, all of them together. And let's see what we got. We have two initials facing up and the rest are, and we have four drawings. I did not get any points and I lost my turn. So now it's the Coyote team's turn to see if they can get a point. Okay. We spent all day fishing. It was our fish. I don't care where it came from. So let's see. Let's what see. do you have? Okay. What do you have? That is five and one. Oh, he had five and one. That is zero points because any other combination gives you nothing. So my turn again. Here we go. I have again two and four. So I get zero points. As you can see, this game can go forever until somebody gets a point. So let's see. Maybe we'll, whoever gets the first point. <laughs> okay, look at that. I gave him good luck because he actually got a point. He got three and three. Three stave sticks are facing up and three are facing down. That means he got one point. And that also means that he keeps on going. It's still his turn because he got a point. He has one point. I have zero. All right. So what did we get? Three and three. You got three and three. You got two points. I think the Coyotes team is going to win. All right. Red side. Uh-huh. I mean, they did fish the fish out of the stream, right? Let's see. What did he? Oh, no, four and two. Uh, four and two. My I turn. I have a chance to steal. All right. I have a chance to catch up on this game. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> I got four and two, which is zero. Zero points for me. Alejandro or the Coyote team has two points. Whoever gets this next point wins. What is it? Five and one. Five and one. So that's zero. It's my turn again. As you can see, this game is so intense. Okay. What did I get? Anything? Nothing. Four and two. Oh, my goodness. I think uh, the great creator of great Wait. things is actually... Yeah, no, I didn't get anything. No, no, you got three and three. Oh, did I? Yeah, yeah. I finally got a point, everybody. I'm catching up. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. I, it's still my turn since I got three and three. Here we go. Oh, nope. I lost my turn. I got zero again. All right. Alejandro, if you win this one, you, you got the you got all the fish. You did it. He got three and three. All right. So the Coyote team has won this game and all the fish. And so as you can see, the game of staves. Thank you, Alejandro. I'm going to bring you back. The game of staves 
has been a fun traditional game for thousands of years. The Olone people, my friends here at the Presidio have taught me this game and now I'm teaching it to all of you. I hope that you can have fun, especially now that we're staying indoors and, and the rains are coming. You can play this game at home. All you need are six, six popsicle sticks. You don't need to go look for elderberry and your favorite markers and have some fun and decorate and enjoy. Thank you so much. I hope that you will enjoy this game at home too. Tima, I am so, uh, wow, that was really neat to watch you playing. Thank you so much, Alejandro, for playing with, uh, with Fatima and uh, I, th I think our viewers at home got to see how fun that game was. We, we kind of were always like, I, I really thought the hummingbirds were gonna get it, but then Goyote's team just, I guess the luck was on their side. So I think this would be a really fun game to play at home with the family and people taking turns and also how creative that you can make your own, you can make your own staves. Um, we want to remind folks that to remember that even if you don't don't have your popsicle sticks right now, or if you don't have your markers right now, just know that the video of this program will be available to you on YouTube on the San Francisco Public Library's YouTube channel. So it's it, it will be there for you when you are ready to create your own games of staves, and if you want to share with other family and friends how they can create their own game. Um, at this time, we would love to hear from those who are watching. If you have any game any any um, questions for Fatima about the stave games or the Oloni or any questions about, um, you know, some of the images that she shared, the really beautiful images that she shared about um, about the Ohlone and the Tule and um, and the uses for, for some of the native plants in the Presidio uh, that you might want to know about. And um, while we wait for questions, um, you know, Fatima, I, I, I know that you have taught this class, I've taught about this Ohlone, Ohlone games in the library in the past. Um, what has been your experience in doing that when you've had had children playing the Ohlone um, game of staves or, or any other Ohlone games? You know, uh, I like to play this game, not just at the library, but here out in the park, out out by the beach and it's always been a really positive experience. Uh, the youth have enjoyed drawing their stave pieces and they become very, you know, uh, protective of them. Like those are mine. And so that's why I make sure to say, always write your name on the back. Um, they love it. They love to play. And they're always like, as soon as they finish their, their game pieces, they're like, okay, who's ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to play. I'm ready to play. And so it's fun to watch. It's fun to see how inspired and how uh, excited they get. Oh, that's neat. And really you only need one set to play, right? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. You only need one set, but I always, you know, have each of the youth that come on my programs create their own so that when they go home, they can use their set with their siblings or cousins or mom and dad. Cool. How did you learn this game? Um, who, who, how did you learn it? I, I guess it would be really, I, we heard in the presentation that, that there had to be the relearning of how to make some of the native crafts, including the, the toilet boats. Um, how did you learn the game of staves? So everything that I know, all the stories, all the games, the medicinal uses of plants, I have learned by attending uh, Olone gatherings or Olone workshops led by Olone people uh, so that I can, you know, share these, this knowledge here in the park with all of you. Um, it, so uh, I was lucky to meet many Olone people in the 20 years that uh, 21 years that I've been working here in this park site and uh, I've learned from them how to make the tule boats how to make um, the the stave pieces myself they even taught me how to you know make fire out of uh, the the uno tree or the buckeye tree so if you attend these gatherings um, sometimes they happen uh, here in San Francisco other times they happen in the East Bay um, look them up and go to these special gatherings or workshops and you can learn these um, these traditions too and yes they have had to relearn a lot of the the, the knowledge was lost with the coming of the Europeans 
and uh, the, you know, the change in religion and traditions, a lot of those things were lost, but luckily, um, some of the traditions were passed down uh, through stories. And others were written down by priests at the different missions or um, uh, ship captains that kept their logs and saw what the people were doing here in, in this uh, land when they first uh, arrived in their ships and kept that, that record. And so now Olone elders have been researching and going through those files and those books, those diaries. And they have been teaching themselves like Linda Yomani comes to mind who is an Olone um, elder from Monterey from the Rumson tribe. And she has been learning how to make baskets again and teaching her, her community. Um, I, I also think about Vincent Medina who is uh, Chocheño Olone and he has been relearning his language and teaching it to his uh, uh, younger tribe members. Uh, so it, it's very inspirational to see how they are relearning and then teaching it to not just their Olone family and tribal members but also to us. So that we hopefully can see how beautiful and um, important it is to share and learn other people's cultures. Yeah, I think that's definitely what we are. That's what that's what um, first person is all about: is honoring those native and indigenous cultures um, locally, and even those that you know that are not so local to us, but that still exist and are out there and, and trying to preserve, having that cultural preservation and also. Um, um, continued growth and just getting more of the word out. You mentioned uh, learning more. What if a person wants to learn more? Is there a place that they can learn more about the Ohlone? Um, is there a site? Is, is there a resource that you would recommend? Hmm. Well, you know, if you want to learn more about plants like the ones I mentioned today, I want to point you out to this book. Now this is uh, the book that I use for today's presentation to look for um, medicinal uses of plants. So this is where I got all that information about the elderberry, you know? So looking into your library <laughs> and checking out books like this uh, is what I do. You know, this is, uh, as you can see, I have my little collection of books all behind me here and around me in my house. Uh, so books, especially now that we're, you know, staying at home, that's the best way. You go online and you go to your local library and check out your next book. And um, I love uh, books with stories. So I got my storyteller. So I love uh, storybooks about um, Olone um, indigenous plants and creation stories, like the one I shared about coyote and hummingbird. And so I also check out books that have that type of um, history in there because a lot of the history that has been passed down has been passed down through stories. Yeah, those, are, those stories are really important. And you reminded me when you showed your book that we actually did share a book list in the chat for those who want to learn more about the Ohlone um, and, and something about some medicinal plants um, to please check out that book list that's in the chat um, and check out those those books. You can check out those books using SFPL to go. Um, we have a couple of comments that have come in. It seems like we have a teacher who's looking very much forward to, sh to sharing staves with her student uh, or with their students. And um, we also have a question about what other Ohlone games are out there. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my other favorite games to play, especially when I brought groups out here to the park and we're out at the beach, I love to play uh, the hoop and spear game. I, you know, I love any kind of movement type of game and that one, you need a hoop. So what I use is a wreath, you know, like how, especially right now in this time of the year where they're selling all these um, wreaths that you can then decorate or well, buy one of those that doesn't have any decorations on it. And I use that as my hoop. And then I use um, sticks, you know, the sticks that I use are the kind that you use for, to make your s'mores right? So those uh, bamboo sticks, and those represent the spears. And what you do is you roll your hoop from one, you know, so I'm standing here and I have Alejandro standing away from me. And then I have my nieces and nephews lined up shoulder to shoulder facing, um, facing where the hoop is going to roll in front of them. The hoop represents a rabbit and a moving target. <laughs> and so you are a hunter and you, the object of the game is to get the, the stick through the hoop 
And that's how you win the points or the game. So it's a game of strategy, a game to help you become um, a great hunter when you grow up. <laughs> so I love that game. Kids, uh, youth of all ages, actually, not just uh, young people, but um, people, adults also love to play the hoop and spear, uh, spear game. That's one of my favorites. It sounds like fun and like total hand eye coordination of like making sure you can you can throw that that stick as fast fast to make it through the hoop. So that is that sounds like a really fun game will require some open space. But yes. um, if folks do go out and have their masks on and they can go out into an open area or open space and and sounds like that that would be a lot of fun to play outside. Yeah, play when it's with not your family. <laughs> when 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 it's not raining, obviously. But um, so yeah, that sounds like it'd be fun. Um, they, I guess, there. I guess one more question about um, the Ohlone language. You mentioned about it that it's being relearned. And okay, so yes, thank you for asking that. So Ohlone people spoke multiple languages. You know, um, as you saw in that for one of the first slides that was shown um, for the land acknowledgement, uh, it showed all the different tribes. Um, there was different different uh, groups here, just here in California, there were so many different groups of Ohlone people and each of them had their own language. And so for, I'll use the example of the Chocheno people because I mentioned Vincent. Uh, Vincent is Chocheno and uh, the Chocheno people are Oakland and all the way down to San Jose. And so um, Vincent is one of those um, tribal leaders that are relearning their language because it was lost, right? And so uh, for him, he went to the Bancroft Library and I don't know what other places to listen to recordings, old recordings that were um, done by Bancroft and his, um, and his people uh, of people telling stories and speaking or singing songs in the Chocheno language. And that's how he has retaught himself how to speak Chocheno. And now he is teaching uh, the young people in his uh, tribe. Uh, he started with his little brother. I remember way back when, when he first started and he was telling us how he was teaching his little brother how to um, say, how are you? Hello, and I am fine uh, through a song. And he taught us, but I, I can't do it. It's Maria Jose, my coworker, who knows how to, how to sing that song really well. But it went something like this. Forgive me, because I'm going to mess it up. But it goes, Hershe to he means hello. Inka I mean means how are you? And this one I always mess up on. Hurra, hersha means I am fine. <laughs> but Maria Jose was uh, really good at singing that song. I wish she was here with us today. Um, but she's doing another project. So uh, Vincent is one of those leaders that has relearned his language is now teaching it to his um, the younger generations in his tribe. Well, that's that's just fascinating. And it just means that maybe we'll just have to have another program that focuses on the Ohlone um, so that we can learn more about uh, the the indigenous inhabitants of this of this area. Well, Fatima, I want to say thank you so much for your wonderful presentation and for joining us today and showing us a really neat game that we can play with our families while we're at home. Um, and do you, I just want to invite you to, if you have any last messages you want folks to know about. Yes, uh, one big one. We just finished our menu of programs for a community outreach here at the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. And so I invite everyone that's uh, watching this today to go online and go to your national park site, Golden Gate National Recreation Area, and look up community group programs and see our menu of programs and see if there's anything that you think would be a good fit for either your school group, your after school group, your child care center, Center, um, your family group, maybe, uh, you know, you have a large family and you want uh, your or your church group. I don't know, you know, um, we are doing virtual programs. So we would be seeing each other just like this through the computer. But uh, because, you know, I'm staying here at home and working from home, but I would love to do a program for you. And check out that menu and see if there's anything there that you like. And Maybe I'll get to sing some songs with you and tell you some stories in the near future. Well, thank you for that nice invitation to our audience to let them know that the, that there is that 
uh, menu of virtual programs in the chat, along with many other links that the audience might find helpful um, and learn something new from uh, the chats, the links that appear in the chat today. So again, thank you so much, Fatima, for being here. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. And um, we look forward to our next program when we get to see you virtually through the screen. Um, thank you for being here, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.